folks. Welcome back to Axiom for Liberty with Kay Beach. I'm Howard Halchin, and we're going to try to get a lot of information here in this last 12 minutes and 30 seconds. And right before we went to break, uh, we were talking about them praying. Uh, I'm going to call it praying on uh, these rural school districts now. Uh, that's just deceptive tactics. And on break, uh, David, you, you came up with, with the greatest thing. The folks need to hear this about how, look, these Narconon folks are taught to be deceptive and to lie. Expand on that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you are taught to lie in Scientology. Even at Narconon, we were, we were drilled on how to give false information, how, how, false data. Uh, they wanted to train me on how to handle media, how, how to handle the press. Uh, in the Narconon in Quebec, the CBC TV went in with, uh, undercover with cameras and they exposed them. And then our government uh, in Quebec uh, uh, issued uh, directives to all the schools not to ever let Narcon in, Narconon in again. And the administrators said they, were, they felt deceived and lied to and tricked. Those are the exact words. I mean, they will do anything to get in. But even after they were banned in 2008, it was, I believe, I, I have uh, leaked emails direct, direct from Narconon staff. And uh, the speaker was instructed in 2009, after they were banned, to try and get in again. And uh, she was directed to say, oh, just tell the school uh, representative uh, that uh, officials appreciate us coming in and approve us coming into the schools. Just outright lies. They will do mm. anything to get into schools. Yeah, David, doesn't that go with keep, keep Scientology winning? Oh, oh, keep, keep, keep Scientology working at any cost. It's for the greater good of Scientology, period. So it's okay to lie? It's okay to Absolutely. just fabricate stuff? Absolutely, even under oath in court. Absolutely. And, and that is the ethics of this organization. That is the ethics. It's the cult of the devil, I'm telling you right now. That's right. That's right. All right. One other thing is that, you know, the response that I got from from my school officials, my superintendent of schools, and I, I mean, she was genuinely sorry. She apologized. Uh, the school board uh, members that I, that I talked with, I mean, th- it was immediate. This is not going to happen again. Yet, uh, we see uh, in, in other communities in Oklahoma and other cities and towns like the one in Canadian, uh, well, what happened there? Yeah, the the one in Canadian, you know, that's the hometown of where uh, Arrowhead is located at. Uh, they, if, uh, if I remember right, uh, they went into the high school and uh, the high school principal had some, I didn't personally talk to him. I, I could never get a phone call back, but a lot of other people have talked to him. And he basically, uh, from to, from what I understood stand, uh, from these phone calls, he endorsed, you know, Narcanani. He said there's nothing wrong with him. But they were also scheduled to go into the Canadian elementary school. And they got uh, informed, educated. They got the, the material so they could see both sides. And they made the decision to not allow them in. Okay, so then you have to question, why did the Canadian high school... Uh, and, and listen, you can't live in Oklahoma and not have picked up on this controversy, which is controversy of the three. There's been seven deaths in seven years, but there were three in nine months. And uh, the, these are this is all under investigation yes. in lawsuits. And so you can't miss this controversy. It's went nationwide. It's went international. It's everywhere. And so you have to question why did the Canadian high school located in the same town as Narcan on Arrowhead, why did they choose to put the interest of Narcan on Arrowhead and Scientology over the interest of their students? Well, why? you know, Narcan on Arrowhead employs half, probably in half the town of Canada. Okay. So there so, we go. You know, hey, economic development guys. is very important. That's right. That's right. I'm uh, more important than your kids. I can tell you that is the, the uh, prevalent thought now that's rather disturbing, but yeah. you did have another situation. Um, this was with Purcell. This is a town just south of where I live, a, a smallish town um, that they had these yeah. knocking yeah, yeah. on people. And all it took was for them to see the information, be that's informed right. of it, and they got rid of it. That's they didn't right. they know. Canceled it. And that's it what done. happens most of the time. That's the same thing that happened uh, after Purcell. I think it was a month later, uh, they came down to the Lawton School District and tried to get into three schools there, starting with MacArthur Junior High School. Can we have a Narcan on free school year next year? Is that um, a good goal to I'm set? I'm praying for that. I'm no, okay, so Howard, you suggested something very obvious. Let's talk about that. Well, w- one thing is, is you know, Look, every community, all, just virtually every community, if, if they don't have it there, it's in the county seat. Uh, the local sheriff's department, the lo- local police department, there is a DARE officer. There's someone uh, associated with a drug task force or whatever. That is, the, that is who 
I, I believe, in my opinion, that these schools need to tap into if you're going to have an anti-drug uh, you know, uh, assembly or whatever that's going to come in and talk to kids. They're local, first of all. Uh, it's not going to cost you anything, though uh, Narconon does do this for free. And, Lord, if I was in their business, I'd be doing it for free, too, because you're going to get paid in the end. Uh, but they're, they're local uh, in the community. You know the background. Uh, you're not going to be taken. So Take, that is my suggestion. Okay, so but you suggested something. Else. Let me say, let me just say, there's some problems with there. <laughs> we'll save it for another show. There's some real yeah. problems with there as a, uh, you know, and yes, the, the guys are local, but there's some real problems with that. But you suggested that every school district get a letter, a brief letter, putting this on their radar and saying, when you have outside groups to come in and do drug education, please, please do your research and make sure that they are not Scientology based and explain that to them. If this well, was just was on their thing. radar. Yeah. And that's one thing that, that led uh, Colin and, and Lucas and, and you and I as, as activists and, and, you know, thousands of other across the state of Oklahoma, we need to get together. And quite frankly, just to put it very bluntly, we need to put pressure on the state superintendent of education, on the department of education in the state of Oklahoma to issue some type of um, a memo, a letter. An advisory. A, yes, an absolutely. An advisory to every, there's okay. five, I believe it's 573, it might be 537 school districts across the state of Oklahoma, and every one of them need to be aware of this. And the fact that they are coming to it, look, if they're coming to Hugo, they're coming, they're, they're trying to get any, anywhere and everywhere. So we, it's up to us, it's up to you and I, Kay, and it's up to everybody else that, that understands what's going on here to put pressure on the DOE and make sure that this does not happen. I do not want another parent to have to have the reaction and the thoughts that ran through my mind. On Monday afternoon, I don't want. I, I don't you want. You were just a this. little livid, just a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, you um, know, uh, uh, Howard, uh, that uh, they boasted about in a press release uh, uh, late last year, last November, uh, about some of the schools that they visited uh, in Oklahoma, and they were all, you know, rural schools. And one of them was uh, close to you. Um, Fort it was Townsend. Fort Townsend. Yeah. So there, you know, the, these guys are going to continue going to the small, small rural school districts. And one key uh, important part of this is when Howard called me Friday and he was telling me about this, I found it very interesting that they came in with no materials, no Narcanon materials like they normally do. They apparently did not say who they were at all. They were just, they were here, you know, doing a, a drug presentation, yada, 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 well, yada, but, thing, but nothing with Narcanon was said. I, I hate to interrupt you and I want you to continue on, but the first thing that, that, that folks need to be aware of is that there was no notification sent to parents. Now, I, you know, I, I can kind of understand that, but, you know, I, I'm a little bit on edge about Narconon. And, you know, by golly, I want to know if Narconon is coming to my school. You know, there was no notification sent to parents. So, I, you know, whether that was coordinated, I, I got the impression that this was one of those real last minute things. Uh, yes, uh, exactly we're towards the end of the school year. The testing are done. The kids really aren't doing anything. And that's a whole nother show. But anyway, uh, and after talking with Colin and, and talking with David, I, it was unusual that they didn't hand out the little brochure and they didn't offer the survey. Now, Nico, according to my son and one of his friends, did mention several times that he was from Narconon, but there was, it was like, okay, I'm going to come in, but there can be no trace or no record of me coming in. That's what it was like. Okay, yeah, that's, that says a lot right there with all the media uh, flap that, that they're in, all the bad press or the true press, uh, the truth that is being exposed over there. They're going to continue to do that. And, and I, if I remember right, you know, I believe there's a um, internal uh, uh, entity within the Department of Education that Janet Barisi oversees, and they're called the Regional Accreditation Officers. Those are the individuals that can get directives out and get Narconon removed from their accreditation list to not allow them to go to a school district and openly solicit their services. They don't have to go through the state or anything. All they can do is go show up at a school because they're through the RAOs, the regional accreditation officers. So maybe hopefully one day during uh, Barisi's uh, for, uh, one term, you know, hopefully she'll get a directive out there or something to uh, to cease this because our kids are – they're violating our kids, and they vi they violated too much a long time ago. Well, one thing that parents should not stand for, and school districts should not stand for, is any type of deceptive. Pr 
practice. And and you, you, you said the key word, violating our kids. And, you know, when I, I, I can't express, I can't put into words how upset I was over this. Because one thing that parents won't stand for is violating your children in a deceptive manner like that. And knowing what these folks are all about, that just will not fly. And I will not rest until there is some type of a memo, a letter of understanding, a directive coming from the State Department of Education to every school district in the state of Oklahoma, warning them about Narconon coming into public schools. Good for you. And I'll tell you something. That what they teach in the lectures is 100% Scientology religious doctrine, even down to uh, they, they, they teach the uh, mental images, the pictures. Uh, that's what your thought process is. It's all Scientology doctrines. You know, and another thing, uh, David, you recognize it. I didn't get the words out of my mouth, and you recognize it. I said he gave a a chalkboard presentation, and that it, it, there there's no record there. It was a chalkboard presentation, and you said you you've seen that before. Oh, absolutely. I saw him being trained at Narconon in Three Rivers. And in fact, they practiced on us as patients uh, so they could get their flow and their their uh, calm legs down pat, so they weren't lagging, so they can do it uh, fluid. And uh, fluently, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was it was incredible. I, I've I've seen the whole thing. All right, Colin, you got anything that you want to add in about the next uh, thirty seconds? Yeah, just real quick, I'd like to give a shout out if that's okay to somebody or uh, a group. Oh. Uh, Osa, you're not stopping us. <laughs> not gonna do it, are they? And uh, can I just say one not thing? Not a chance in hell. Go go for it, Dave. I want to thank uh, Senator Ivester. Uh, he was incredibly uh, receptive to Colin and I and Daniel going to his uh, to the, the, the Senate office and delivering uh, over 200 pages of documents that we used to uh, shut them down here in Quebec. And I think he did a wonderful job. And I want to thank him and Governor Fallon for for. Uh, fast-tracking this. You know, you're exactly right. Look, we hammer our legislators and our governor on here a lot, but I'm going to give them a round of applause when they do something right, and this was 100% right. And uh, for Senator Ivester's press release, my favorite statement, he told it just how the cow ate the cabbage. We'll be right back.